Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a quick broadcast of Jerusalem's Gate. I really just wanted to uh, put out a short video. Uh, you know, it's so very important, and uh, for those who have been following Jerusalem's Gate, know that I've been preaching this for so long, what I feel that the Holy Spirit has touched my heart for so many years now to get the word out to my beloved country that I love so dearly. Uh, you know, there's no doubt that the world is being affected uh, by uh, p nations and people falling away from the Lord. Uh, you know, God has, uh, in our, God has put in our heart the hearts of our forefathers that created this country. And there's many upon many upon many writings of our forefathers that forewarned us what would happen if we fall away from being a Christian nation. As recent as Ronald Reagan was quoted saying that if we cease to be one nation under God, we will be one nation gone under. Uh, you know, we have to make up our mind, and you heard me say this so many times, the first bridge to cross is if we want to be a Christian country, or do we want to be a, a country of many gods? Now, I remind you, Israel, ancient Israel, uh, tried on numerous occasions to have be a, a nation of many gods. And God let mo a more evil country overtake them. And Israel is God's country. So if God did it to his own country, what makes us think that God won't do it to the United States of America? Now, there's no doubt there's wrath upon the world. There's no doubt about that. And I hate to talk about wrath, but... Every once in a while we have to address it. Now, the question is asked, what is God looking for from America? Well, I can tell you through many decades of praying and fasting, uh, to sum it up in the most simplistic uh, way, in the most fundamental way, uh, is Second Chronicles 7.14. And you heard me talk about this. Second Chronicles 7.14 I believe has something to do with our country, the United States. Let's let's go over it and we'll dissect it. Second Chronicles 7:14. I hope you can see the screen. Uh, if my people, which are called by my name, okay. Now you heard me say this. If my people, which are called by my name, now, what does Christians mean? Christians means Christ ones. O n e s, Christ ones. Now, the United States was made to be a beacon of Christian nation, to, to, to take the forefront and the leadership of the uh, free world, uh, to be uh, known as the biggest Christian country in the world. And we have fallen away with, I can go in, I can spend all day talking about things, but one main thing is like abortions. Uh, when abortions were... Uh, uh, legalize uh, you started seeing a quickening of falling away and we started falling away prior to that but it's been getting worse and worse and worse as every decade goes by okay the reason I'm saying that is which are called by my name so we're we're the largest Christian nation so uh, we're, Christian means Christ ones Christ is the name is his title Jesus is his name if my people, which are called by my name, so I think he could be talking about the United States here, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin. And hear, the, hear this real clearly. And I will heal their land. Now, I truly believe the Second Chronicles seven fourteen is our roadmap to return back to being a Christian nation. Uh, I have nothing against Muslims. I have nothing against uh, people that uh, uh, serve Buddha or Hindu, whatever the religion. But the United States was created to be a Christian nation. Our forefathers. Uh, created to be a Christian nation. We were founded on 
people that left uh, uh, mainly uh, religious persecution to have a, a Christian nation where they can be free of persecutions. We can't forget our, 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 how the United States got started. Uh, now, uh, there's no doubt that, you know, it's no secret. Nothing is kept secret in politics. And uh, the word got out some uh, time ago that uh, we, the United States, experimented with forms of torture. That has to be immediately uh, forsaken. Reason being, the next time we go, for one thing, it's wrong. And two, it's a, uh, crimes against humanity. And three, if we want to punish other countries for being human rights violators, we got to uh, abide by human rights too. Now, the next time we go in battle, and they will be a next time, the, nothing's kept secret. The word is out. Now, it, it, it strengthens the resolve of our enemies in future battles to fight to death other than surrendering. Now, the reason there weren't more American casualties in a European th the theater in, 19, uh, in the 1940s at World War II is because Germany, uh, the people in Germany dropped down their arms and they tried to their best to get to the Brits and to the Americans because we are known as human rights protectors. Uh, and that's why they quit fighting. And if they would, have, if we would have been known as a country that tortures, the Germans would have fought to the the last person to death, and that would have caused so much more casualties on the uh, on uh, the United States and on our allies. So the next time we go in battle, our enemies will fight to death rather than being to, uh, captured and and uh, take a chance on being tortured. I'm just telling you the the simple facts of what uh, the word is out there. Uh, and they will be a next battle, ladies and gentlemen. They will be a next battle. Uh, how do we know this? Because man has a tendency to wage war against man. Uh, it started with uh, uh, Cain and Abel. Cain killing Abel. Uh, now, uh, we humble ourselves and we repent as a nation and we turn back to God and commit ourselves to being a Christian nation again and turn away from those things and correct the damage that's been done. Now we outlawed God in the schools, in the workplace, in the government, and God has been good to us. The Lord has been very good to the United States of America. Uh, after World War II, God brought our, our GIs home. He blessed the dollar to be the currency of the world. Our, our country po prospered beyond any human comprehension. And uh, uh, because that generation, the generation from the 1940, gen the generation that fought World War II, was the greatest generation this country's ever had. Let's make let's make a new. Let's be even better than a, the the best generation, and let's return to Christ as a Christian nation. And I'm telling you, the Lord is willing, able, and eager to protect our homeland and to. Bless us. He wants to bless the United States. He desires it. And he's very grieved that we've turned away from him and that we, we, we have divorced Jesus and threw his name out of our uh, government and schools and uh, workplaces. And we need to return back to Christ. I've done everything in my power to tell people the ramifications of us keep falling away and doing these things, like abortions and many other things that you heard me talk about over the years. We can do it, ladies and gentlemen. We can return as a Christian nation. I know we can. And we can be better than the, the, the best generation it's ever been. It takes a dedication and it takes a, a, a resolve uh, not to be ashamed to call ourselves a Christian nation, uh, not to be ashamed of uh, people saying that we're uh, being uh, uh, un it's unconstitutional uh, to claim that we're a Christian nation. 
you can worship whoever you want to worship in the United States. If you want to worship the devil, you have a right to worship the devil. I don't recommend it. I, the consequences are far more than you, you can uh, imagine. But uh, if you want to serve the devil, you have a right to serve the devil. But we, we can't forget we were formed as a Christian nation. That's what the United States was formed. And we have gotten away from it. And I highly suggest over many, many years, decades now, I have done everything in my power to warn my beloved country that I love so dearly to return back to Christ. Christ is not asking for perfection, just a new direction. Give it a lot of thought, ladies and gentlemen. Do we want to be a Christian nation or do we want to continue spiraling away from the Lord? With that and said, you're watching and listening to another broadcast of Jerusalem's Gate. Gate. Remember, we love you, uh, and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. I've always believed that we were put here for a reason, that there is a path, somehow a, a divine plan for all of us, and for each one of us. And I've also always believed that America was set apart in a special way, that it was put here between the oceans to be found from by a certain kind of people based on a quality that these people had, but that they came from every corner of the world. And a country then was created by men and women who came not for gold, but mainly in search of God. They would be free people, living under the law with faith in their maker and in their future. It's been written that the most sublime figure in American history was George Washington on his knees in the snow at Valley Forge. He personified a people who knew that it was not enough to depend on their own courage and goodness, that they must also seek help from God, their father and preserver. Where did we begin to lose sight of that noble beginning? of our conviction that standards of right and wrong do exist and must be lived up to? Do we really think that we can have it both ways? That God will protect us in a time of crisis even as we turn away from Him in our day-to-day -day life? It's time to realize, I think, that we need God more than He needs us.